siku hizi mbusi iko na faida kusinda kahawa we had two separate holding grounds carrying live animals is not an easy stuff the, all the 45 goats got their safe very soon they will be allocated to a higher ground as a county uh, we are very happy our niche is around commercialization of agriculture It is early morning in Kirinyaga County in central Kenya and dairy goat farmers are busy loading their herd of breeding goats into a lorry. Uh, we have all the goats, 34 females, 11 males. The lorry is destined to Jomo Kenyatta International Airport in Nairobi, Kenya's capital city. Thereafter, they will be loaded onto a DC-9 aircraft destined for Djibouti. This is uh, the very first time that uh, Kirinyaga County is also going to appear in the, in the world uh, goat map. Our county is uh, exporting uh, live animals for breeding uh, uh, to another, another country uh, outside uh, Kenya. I sold three goats. I have earned a lot of money. I'm happy produce something to go abroad. These pedigree goats, known as the Kenya Alpine Goats, are as a result of a breeding program initiated by the Dairy Goats Association of Kenya, DGAK. The initial herd came from Germany. We bought uh, males, so that's the bucks, and we use the males on our indigenous small East African goats. We have upgraded since 1992 up to date and the back is rotated after every 15 months so that we don't have any breeding. The main reason for this was to improve the quality and quantity of milk from the goats and contribute to improving the livelihoods of smallholder farmers across Kenya. Masamba irisa ya kugaiwa na wazazi. Ukiriza hizi mambuzi ya daily on goat as a season utapata faita ukipata mbuzi mbili tatu za maziwa unaweza pata lita sita pande na maziwa ya mbuzi lita moja ni mia moja. sasa ukiweka mbuzi tatu utapata faida kuliko hiyo hata ukipanda kahawa na ukua na, na mbuzi tatu siku hizi mbuzi iko na faida kusinda kahawa because of the low capital investment required to start dairy goat farming over 12,000 farmers in Kenya are now practicing dairy goat farming as an income generating activity and approximately 2,000 of them are in Kirinyaga County. But due to the high demand for dairy goat milk across the country, their main markets have remained largely local. However, there are opportunities to sell goats across the Eastern Africa region. We are playing our role as an association of farmers. You know, how do we link, uh, you know, farmers with markets, uh, but also how do we also improve the well-being of our members? For this reason, the Eastern Africa Farmers Federation, EF, a regional farmers organization with members across 10 Eastern and Central African countries, is helping farmers from its member organizations across the region to find markets build their capacity, help improve their productivity, provide market information, and help foster regional integration. We are actually a regional body of farmers, and we are actually in 10 countries, uh, with a membership of uh, 23 apex uh, organizations uh, on, on board. So in Djibouti, we have a, a farm organization uh, that is actually uh, an agro-pastoral association of Djibouti that is actually uh, our member and we have actually been trying to uh, assist them in many ways in ensuring that they actually have capacity to be able to, to, to function. Due to the effects of climate change in Djibouti, the association Agropastoral Djibouten, well known as DAPA, one of the member associations of EF, showed interest to import dairy breeding goats from Kenya with an aim of starting a dairy goat breeding program 
that will improve farmers' milk productivity, help build their resilience, and improve their livelihoods. Because of frequent droughts in our area of the world, people who are nomads, basically nomads, are losing their livestock. And they are all going to the towns. And when they go to towns, they have nothing to do. And that only increases the uh, unemployment. The pastoralists uh, has been over the year being affected by these climate change effects. One of the problems, we have many pastoralists drop out. Being a pastoralist means that you need to be, you keep moving around, you need to have access to water, you need to have access to pasture. And if you don't have access to pasture and water, therefore your animals will suffer. With the kind of climate we have in Djibouti, uh, it's a bit hostile to, to, to dairy animals, especially dairy cows. And uh, a perfect substitute for, for that is, you know, is, is goats, is dairy goats. The reason being that uh, goats are easier to adapt, uh, they're easier to manage in terms of stocking levels, uh, they're easier to feed, uh, and um, you know they have many other nutritional advantages in terms of not only the meat, but also the milk, yeah, which is very important, especially uh, for, ch for children uh, who are of school-going age. According to the Food and Agriculture Organization, FAO Djibouti, the current local Djiboutian goats have a low milk productivity level of less than 0.3 liters per day. In the goat farming system, pastoralists and agropastoralists rely mostly on local breeds. Because of their low milk productivity of less than 0.3 liters per day per door, the import of the daily breeding goats from Kenya and their crossing with Djibouti and local goats will significantly increase this level of productivity up to one liter per day per door. Along with the general improvement of goat management system, this innovative solution will help combat food insecurity and poverty currently affecting 46.1% of rural households and nearly 42% of Djibouti households. Uh, milk is very expensive. And especially those who are in the interior of the country to get milk, uh, they have to keep lots of goats. Let's say instead of getting one or 1.5 liters of uh, uh, milk from uh, one of these goats, they have to keep five or six in their, in, on feed them. So these animals are uh, well adapted to intensive farming. That means being kept in a farm and fed there rather than sent out to graze outside. With the request coming from our membership in Djibouti, we started to, to identify ways in which we can uh, uh, get uh, superior goats that actually uh, are bred in Kenya. And uh, for the purposes of seeing how we can actually work around improving uh, the breeds that we actually have in Djibouti. But what does it take to export live animals from one country to another? Dr. Nelson Ojango and Jacqueline Sawe, who have accumulated years of experience in live animal exportation, explain. The World Health Organization for Animals, OIE in French, uh, stipulates uh, that there should be an import permit that is issued by the country to which you are exporting. After the intention has been arrived at, the first step that the government of Kenya would require is a letter of no objection. Meaning the person in charge of the veterinary services in the other country should actually send a written letter saying they have no objection to these animals coming into the country provided A, B, C, D are fulfilled. The press sources um, basically include meeting the requirements of the import permit. In this case, the import permit issued by the Ministry of Agriculture in Djibouti required that the goats must be free from infectious and parasitic diseases such as brucellosis, foot and mouth disease, blue tongue, rift valley fever, pleuro pneumonia, and PPR. 
they should have no sign of infections such as cough, watering, nozzle discharge or diarrhea. They should not show any signs of lameness or injury. Their rectal temperature should range from 38.5 to 39 degrees Celsius and their respiratory rhythm should range between 5 to 15 at rest. Results from the blood samples taken confirm that the selected goats were free from the specified diseases as per the import permit requirements and a total of 45 dairy breeding goats, 34 does and 11 bucks were selected, tagged and taken to two separate holding grounds within Kirinyaga County where climate conditions are almost similar to Djibouti. The goats have been collected from various farmers within Kerenyaga County and we selected the uh, drier areas of uh, Kerenyaga uh, where I informed these goats are going to Djibouti. A bit of geography tells us that's a little bit dry place. So we didn't want them to come from the very wet places like the T-zones and the rest. We had two separate holding grounds because we wanted to hold the males away from the females. It is important to separate the males from the females because this is a breeding project and we want to be sure that we know who has been mated with whom. It's very important and we, we also have can set a time from which we know that mating didn't happen. That, that is important to be able to say from this time no mating happened. For easy identification and proper record keeping, both the female and male goats had specific information on their ear tags. The 34 females were tagged as DAPA 001 to DAPA 034, while the male goats were tagged as DAPA H01 to DAPA H11, where H stood for homes, which is a French word for male, and DAPA is the importing organization. The goats were required to stay at the holding ground for a period of one month where they were vaccinated, dewormed and fed properly to obtain the required weight under the watchful eyes of a government veterinary officer as required by law. We took blood samples for testing of some of the reproductive diseases like bacteriosis, trichomoniasis and then brucellosis. The other, thing, the other activity we did is to vaccinate them against some of the contagious caprine diseases including the CCPP, the Rift Valley Fever, then we have the blue tank and the PPR. And also to make sure that they are well fed over the few days they have been there. To process the export permit for the goats, a second health inspection was done and a health certificate was issued which was presented to the Director of Veterinary Services at National Government together with the vaccination cards, the lab results and the import permit. I found that the goats had all the necessary requirements. First and foremost it had the import permit from the DVS, the export permit from the DVS, it had the import permit from Djibouti government. It had the lab, the lab results, it had the vaccination certificates, and I got some myself satisfied. The ectoparasite was okay, up to date, and I'm so happy today that it was being accompanied by two veterinarians. You need to be planning your transport on the side so that as soon as these papers are ready, your transport is ready, and you move them depending on whichever transport you're using. In this case, they get airlifted to Djibouti and from the airport to the farms. A tentative date was set to transport the goats to Djibouti using Astro Aviation Airline, but there are several international regulations that must be met as per the International Air Transport Association, IATA, when transporting live animals in freight to ensure safety. Carrying live animals is not an easy stuff. It's not like carrying general cargo. There are a lot of requirements that one must meet for you to be able to carry live animals, uh, not limited to temperature controls, uh, supply of constant oxygen, penning system. The animals must be well caged so that uh, they don't shift when the aircraft is moving and stuff like that. Due to these requirements, two cages were designed measuring 200 centimeters wide, 150 centimeters high, 170 centimeters long 
and were brought for approval at the airport before due date of travel to ensure conformity. The measurements were determined by the plane that was going to carry the cages. So those widths were given, uh, determined by the size of the plane. Yeah, anything wider would not fit in the plane. We are going to use the DC-9 freighter. The choice of the DC-9 is uh, very strategic because this aircraft is pressurized. We will be able to do up to about 30,000 uh, feet above sea level. We will be able to regulate the temperature, the cabin temperature, so that uh, we don't fly with the goats when it's too cold or too hot. Basically, uh, on paper, uh, everything is set. It is on the 4th of April 2016, and the goats are on the road getting moved from the two holding grounds where they have spent a month under observation to Kenya's Jomo Kenyatta International Airport, where they will be airlifted straight to Djibouti. But first, as a matter of procedure, they have to be taken to an animal holding area at the airport for a final health inspection by a government veterinary officer. Animals have to pass this station so that we verify their documentation. Once we see there's the veterinary health certificate, the DVS uh, authority to export or import the animal, the laboratories, then we verify the document and then release it for export. Immediately after the final health inspection at the airport was completed, an export permit was issued and all the goats were loaded separately into the cages. Their weight was measured and loaded into the DC-9 plane which took off to Djibouti immediately. After safely landing in Djibouti, the goats were received by a delegation from the Djibouti government led by the Minister of Agriculture, Livestock and Fisheries, after which they were taken straight to a quarantine zone where they were put under observation for a period of not less than 30 days to acclimatize to their new environment before being handed over to the farmers. All the 45 goats got there safe, um, in good health, they were all tired but healthy. The animals arrived in Djibouti safely. They are in quarantine in Djibouti and uh, very soon they will be allocated to a higher ground, much cooler. After that they will be distributed to different districts of Djibouti to cross with our stock in order to get better productivity out of the goats. They are going to be held in quarantine because this is standard procedure upon receiving um, animals from outside of, a, of, of, a, of, of any country. If they're coming into Kenya, they'll be held. Because they're going there, they're also going to be held for observation because it's a new environment and uh, it allows for the veterinary authorities to determine if there's any issues. And if there's any issues, normally they'll show within 21 to 30 days. Though the export to Djibouti was successfully carried out, some challenges were experienced and lessons learned along the way. We had um, challenges testing them for the reproductive diseases that the import permit required them to have. Um, these tests were done at VIL Karatina, a veterinary investigation laboratory in Karatina, but two of them failed one, one particular test, but the confirmatory test could not have been done in Karatina, so that had to be done at Kabete. And uh, there was a lot of delay in sending the sample, so that almost delayed the process. There are many things we've learned, uh, side of government, we've also learned a lot then on the side of the associations in terms of uh, preparedness uh, to receive uh, these kind of animals. Now we can actually approach the county government and actually say, let's, in as much as we're improving our hospitals, uh, for the purposes of you know, the health of the human being. Can we also look at how we can improve the labs that are involved uh, in uh, you know, disease identification and analysis and, and lab work uh, with respect to, to, 
to animals eh? because this is, 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 is one of the big, biggest challenges or obstacles uh, uh, for market access. But we've also seen, uh, I mean, things we did know, for example, that um, you know, in Kenya now, the whole process of just accessing an export permit is all digitized. And you actually can receive uh, a permit within 24 hours, yeah, which I think is, 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 is something we can actually be able to, uh, to share out with other countries to actually improve on that. We are happy in that uh, our niche is around commercialization of agriculture and ensuring that small scale farmers are actually connected with regional trade. As a county, uh, we are very happy uh, to be associated uh, with this venture.